All right, we are with Pierre Pierce here in Westmont. Uh, where else would we find Pierre? Um, many, many years ago, Pierre uh, touched a special place in our heart for our coverage of high school basketball in Chicago. And I think he can tell you about it before we actually ask him anything about what's happening today. But in 00 and 01, I believe was the years, right, Pierre? Mm -hmm. right. 2000, 2001. Special time for you and for us. So talk to us about exactly what it was like playing at Westmont High School and break down exactly the... Uh, Getting to the finals and, and your gym two consecutive oh, years. Oh, man. I mean, the, the atmosphere in that gym in uh, section finals against Leo and Providence St. Mel in a uh, sectional championship were uh, memories I will always remember, you know, because the electricity in the building and just that time when high school basketball was where it was at and, you know, uh, playing against guys like Andre Brown and LeVar Seals and Stan mm -hmm. Gaines, guys that all have furthered their careers. Uh, professionally you know and um, it was just really a good time for us and you know to capture the championship the second year in 2001 and eventually make it downstate to get fourth place was something that I always cherish and remember with that group of guys and the coaching staff at the time and you know some special moment with our fans and, exactly. and some with the school as well went down the history so uh, definitely good times good memories exactly we were talking before about how you managed to go from Chicago to Westmont Fill everybody in on the story, how that yeah, happened. Yeah, we moved to the suburbs when I was young, and uh, family relocated to the west suburbs for the education and, you know, uh, better schooling, and they uh, had the opportunity to come out here and broaden my horizons as well, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, focus on the things I love to do, which is, which is playing basketball, and that, that kind of developed from an early age, and uh, the same group of guys who I went through elementary school with, went through junior high school with, all, we all played together in 2000, 2001 in that sectional championship game and make it downstate mm -hmm. uh, to take fourth place. So uh, that transformation happened when I was young and mm -hmm. uh, something that helped me develop and become a better person, a better ball player. Exactly. As we were also talking about, we come in and we see you guys uh, years later and you have changed a little bit. So fill us in on your height, your weight, your playing position, and exactly what's happening for you today. Yeah, right now I'm currently 6'4". Uh, two, two, ten, two, twelve, 212, right around there. What were you in high school? Oh, high, 185. <laughs> and uh, my, before I left Iowa, I was 205. Uh -huh. you know, so I'm going to fluctuate a little bit, but I helped maintain that uh, that weight and get a little bit more strength on me, uh, a little bit more body mass. And, uh, you know, I've been playing in Europe now these last four seasons, a couple years in France, uh, spent a year, half a year in Greece uh -huh. so I broke my foot. And uh, had a rehab, had a screw in my foot, and uh, at the end of the season last year in the Ukraine. And this past season, I started off in Georgia. Mm -hmm. The situation went very well. The team uh, was unprofessional, so they breached the contract in more than one way. So oh, had to end that, end that, and come home. Been home for the last three weeks, just staying in shape. The things you see today—that's something I do every day. You know, uh, sometimes twice a day, and. It, no days off, you know. You, you can't take any days off because you have to be ready. You have to be ready to go, and um, hoping to get back to Europe uh, the next few weeks mm -hmm. and uh, finish this, finish the year up strong. Are you looking for any opportunities here? Do you leak stuff or anything? Are you, you basically? Know, I, I, that's, that's definitely an option that I'm, I'm looking at now. Uh, I'm not, you know, not closing any doors. That, any opportunity is an opportunity. And I'm gonna try to take advantage of anything. Mm -hmm. and anyone wants to give me an opportunity to, to see that, so. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely there with this lockout looming. Hopefully, you know that that's changed the atmosphere in Europe with a lot of NBA guys going there, and um, you know the D League is still going on. But you know, if there's no NBA season, you know, mm -hmm. it's not much of a D League. So we'll see. You know, I'm I'm, I'm available, for, available for anything at this point. Talk to me about the highlights of your game right now. Um, what's your strengths? What do you find uh, that you do with ease and the coaches love you for? You know, my game has become more mature, is maturing now, you know, as I get older. And I'm still able to do the things, get to the basket, be explosive, and uh, mature more of my game, you know, uh, being a better playmaker. They like my playmaking abilities, uh, make the game easier for my teammates, my rebounding abilities, uh, the fact that I can guard many positions, point really through the four, one through the four. And um, I can do many different things on the court and be effective and be efficient, you know, with my time out there. I don't need the ball in my hands all the time. I don't, you know, need special plays called for me. I'm just able to go out there and do what I need to do and give it my all. So um, that's something that, you know, I've been doing since I was a little kid. So it's just something that's 
carried out throughout throughout my career as well. You're 28 now. Do you feel your better days are ahead in terms of playing? You can actually get better than you are right now. I do. I I, I believe so. You know, because uh, I'm getting I'm getting better every day. I, I really can feel it. You know, and um, my game and things becoming easier. I'm able to see the game a lot better than I used to when I was younger. And um, you know, my, just my jump shit, my jump shots got has improved so much. And uh, it's just. I know how to make the game easy. I know what I need to do. I know, you know, how to do it and uh, how to be effective at the same time. You know, uh, playing in Europe has really helped me. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a different game. It's a different, you know, atmosphere. Everything is not, you know, the referees and you got to adjust to everything. You know, especially living and uh, being away from family and friends for so long and you know, learning a different language and different cultures. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, it's an experience that I, I'll definitely remember. What's your number one highlight of overseas? What comes to your mind first? I mean, a good highlight. Oh, man. You know, I, I really just traveling to all these different places I've been, you know, Paris and uh, being in Russia, being in Lithuania, and just seeing how different people live. And, uh, you know, because basketball is only going to take me so far. You know, I want to be able to say, you know, when I was here, I got to go to the Louvre Museum in Paris mm -hmm. and see the Mona Lisa and the Eiffel Tower. You know, things that, you know, I would never – thought I've been doing, you know, mm -hmm. so um, and the experience of just playing against guys I've grown up with since college, you know, I still see people overseas I see uh, when I play against them, so just the experience of all in itself, man, Europe has it, been great to me. Final question, Pierre, I just want you to just sum up into words the best you can as to where things are for you right now. Uh, it's been a, an incredible 10 years uh, since we've last seen each other. Just sum up your life, basketball, your feelings. Yeah, I mean, uh, man, 10 years, I can say it's a long time. It seemed like it was just yesterday when uh, I graduated from high school and, uh, you know, going through my experiences at Iowa have helped shape me and uh, through the good and the bad, you know, and uh, the experiences, the opportunity I've had to play ball in Europe and while I'm also trying to pursue an NBA career as well, and whether that be through the D League or some some of that nature, summer league, uh, it's been life. You know, life is life is coming. You deal with it and you make the best of it. You know, and uh, try to take no days off and enjoy it while it's here. You know, and that's what I'm planning on doing. You know, basketball is going to take me for so long, and I'm trying to uh, maximize it uh, uh, as well as much as I can on the court and off the court. So well, let me follow up one question okay. more than I was going to ask. What are your life plans after basketball? Like you said, it all for every player has mm -hmm. an ending day. Mm -hmm. what's, what's afterwards for people? I'm planning on finishing up my degree. I only have two classes I need to take. And, uh, you know, I love basketball. I love the game. So I feel, I, I know I need to be around it, you know, because I feel like I have so much knowledge. And, you know, when I get older and I'm, when I'm done playing, I might want to coach. I, might want, I, need, I just need to be around the game of basketball in some capacity, whether that's scouting or uh being an agent or I don't know, you know, but I just know the game of basketball is gonna be with me for the rest of my life. Thanks, Pierre. All right.